Welcome to Electro Online. In the last video, we saw what an inactive black hole looked like. It basically just had three parts. It had the singularity, the event horizon, and the distance from the singularity to the event horizon, which was the Schwarzschild radius. So in an active black hole, we still have those same three basic parts. They're right in here. But now we zoomed out a little bit because if the black hole is an active black hole, what that means is that it's pulling in material from the outside. A black hole is an opportunistic kind of thing. It just isn't able to pull in things from too far away, but if for some reason something ventures too close, a planet, a star, anything, a nebula, the black hole with its powerful gravitational force will pull on it to the point where it gets pulled in towards the black hole. Usually before it gets close to the black hole, the enormous gravitational forces will rip the object apart. It will be a planet or the star, doesn't matter. It simply rips the object apart and all the debris tends to go around the black hole, kind of like a whirlpool. Now, because objects tend to not be in a situation where they are moving straight towards the black hole, usually they're moving away, not away from the black hole, but if the black hole was here, usually objects will just kind of move around it like this or like this, but as they get close, the force pulls it in, and so they start getting pulled in like this. So that's why you get the whirlpool action. That's what we expect to happen in space in most cases. If it just happens that something heads straight to the black hole, then of course you wouldn't have the situation. It will just go right in. But most of the time, it will go at an angle, and then it just gets pulled in. And all the material will be ripped apart from the gravitational forces, and all the debris will start swirling around the black hole. And slowly as the whirlpool get closer and closer, and eventually get pulled into the black hole. As the debris is swirling, it will accelerate because it's getting closer and closer to the black hole. There's a lot of friction and collisions within the debris. It heats the debris up to very high temperatures and the accretion disk will begin to glow in visible light. So we can actually take pictures of accretion disks around black holes. We may not see the black hole itself because nothing can get outside the event horizon from within, but around the black hole, if it gets hot enough, it will begin to glow. And so accretion disks have been photographed of black holes around us. Then what happens is all this swirling material, and of course swirling material of neutrons, protons, and electrons, the charged particles will set up very powerful magnetic fields. So even though material gets pulled into the black hole gravitationally, these enormously powerful magnetic fields will grab some of the particles and shoot them out in two streams of particles going in both directions, up and down, perpendicular to the orientation of the accretion disk. Speeds are obtained close to the speed of light as the particles go out and shoot out in very straight beams. So these are simply beams of very fast moving particles. Eventually, as they get far enough away and the gravitational forces of the black hole diminish, then they start running into interstellar matter. And as they run into interstellar matter, they get bounced around, they slow down, and they cause, they create what we call radio lobes. Masses of material that is moving, much slower than they were initially, and as they bump into the, into the interstellar matter, they form regions where very high doses of radio radiation get emitted from the radio lobes, and that's why they call them radio lobes, because they emit radio radiation. So, essentially, a black hole that's active now has five parts. It has what we call the singularity, the event horizon, the Schwarzschild radius, it has the accretion disk around it, and then it has the radio lobes. You could also potentially mention that it has those fast, those beams of fast moving particles and you can mention that the matter falls in from the accretion disk into the black hole. It is estimated that roughly 60% of the accretion disk will eventually get pulled into the black hole and that about 40% of the material will actually get pushed away from the very powerful magnetic fields in those beams out to the radio lobes. So, you can kind of think about a black hole is being a messy eater. Only 60% gets inside, 40% gets spread around the table and doesn't make it into the stomach, so to speak. Well, not quite like that, but you can imagine that only 60% material gets inside the black hole. The rest gets spewed out at speeds near the speed of light out towards the interstellar matter where, you, where it creates the radio lobes that begin to radiate out the very powerful radio radiation. And so quite often we know from 
noticing these radio lobes, which can be, of course, uh, photographed with radio telescopes. Photographed, that seems kind of a weird term. At least detected, perhaps. Detected by the radio telescopes as an indication that there must be a black hole nearby, an active black hole, and that's how we know. So I thought you said you could tell by the accretion disk. We can sometimes also tell, but that's much more difficult to photograph than the very powerful radiation of the radio lobes, which is much bigger and much easier to see. How big are the radio lobes? Uh, they go out millions and millions of miles, and they're very big, sometimes billions of miles, sometimes many light years. I mean, they're absolutely enormous. I can't do justice here. So actually, if this is the accretion disk, then these would be the radial lobes. So they're much bigger than, than the black hole in the accretion disk. Yeah, it's a good question. So yeah, those are huge in comparison to what you see there. Only two lobes, or you only two? Only two. One in each direction. Really? Mm -hmm. Yeah, so one that way, and one that way, like that. Because the magnetic fields work in such a way that it only sends a stream of particles up and a stream of particles down in no other direction. Straight away, straight away from the black hole, perpendicular to the accretion disk. Because as the particles move this way, if you take your finger and you curl them in the direction of the accretion disk, your thumb will point in the direction of the magnetic field, and so the particles will shoot up the magnetic field along the direction of the magnetic field. Go up the other side. And the other side. So because you go like this and you point downward. So this way points up, and this way it points down. 